Hi, it's Scott with Supreme Growers, and we're in the Grow Lab today to show you how to clone the Supreme Way. We've got a few products that we use to really increase the success rate of our clones. Let's start off with silica. This is simply silica right here. This is a 2% potassium silicate. This is one of the secret ingredients in making clones work. So we're just gonna take a little bit, it's about five milliliters. We'll put it in there, we'll stir it up. We always mix our silica first. Silica can have reactions with the other nutrients, so you always wanna dilute it first. So now that we've got our silica diluted, we're gonna continue with our blend. The next thing we want to do is add super kelp. Super kelp is loaded with phytohormones that actually really speed up the root germination process. So what we're going to do here is pour another five mils in here. Give it a good shake already. There you go. And this has all sorts of micronutrition, trace elements, but really what we want is the kelp is powerful with loaded with rooting hormones. So that's what we're looking for out of this kelp. And then what we lastly, we wanna give it a little shake and put a little bit of mycoblast in here. Mycoblast is a myco mycorrhizae inoculant. Mycoblast is going to colonize on the new roots. As soon as the root calluses and forms, this mycorrhizae is gonna grow on it and it's gonna form a symbiotic relationship. It's gonna actually go out and find food for the roots and keep those roots alive because mycorrhizae needs those plant roots to live. It feeds off them. So we're gonna just give I like to go heavy on this because you just can't burn them with mycorrhizae. So I give it about four mils, maybe five mils. And we'll stir that up. And now we've got a bioactive, meaning that we've got living bacteria and fungus just starting to multiply and starting to colonize. And so that means we want to use this, I'd say within 12 hours. The sooner the better. All right, so now is the action time. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our root cubes. I've got some Root Riot root cubes here. Uh, very similar products all around. They look like this. They've got a little hole on top there. And so we soak these just to get the... Oops, let's get those going down there. To get all the nutrient inside them. You can give them a little squeeze if you want. And I'll let those sit for a few minutes there. You throw a couple more in. However many clones we're going to cut today, that's however many cubes we'd want to soak in there. These probably won't take very long. Okie dokie. And now, here are two tools that we can use to cut clones with. One is much better than the other. These scissors look like they're a good tool to cut clones with, but what happens is as we cut, these scissors actually start by crushing the tissue and they're crushing that delicate tissue that we want to heal and want to grow roots on. So therefore we're much better off with something more precise, more surgical. I actually do use scalpels sometimes, but a simple razor blade will do, a nice new razor blade will do. And so what we're gonna do to clone, we're gonna prepare our cube, take one of our cubes there, set it in place so it doesn't, these are great, just cause the cubes usually wanna fall down. So if you can find one of these trays at your local gardening center, maybe cost you a dollar or two, and it keeps your cubes up in place. So these little trays are great. So we're gonna come over and we're gonna find hopefully some somewhat new growth. So we can see here's a little bit of old damaged growth there, but right here are some nice new growth. So we're going to go down to where there's a leaf coming off and we're gonna clean that a little bit. It's okay if we slice into the stem a little bit. There we go. And now we're gonna just shave that off. So now we've got that there, we'll shave that off and then very quickly into the water. 
when you cut a piece of a plant like that to make a clone out of, as soon as you cut it, it sucks up air. And then that air is what actually ends up killing the clone. So it's very important right after you cut it, you want to get it into uh, your water or your root nutrient solution, what we have here. You want to stick it in there for about 10, 15 seconds. So I'll move this out of the way. And you can see that, there we go that we're over here. Now, normally you would use a rooting hormone, hormodin, or a dipping gel. Because of all the natural hormones that are available in kelp, we don't need to do that. All we need to do is stick this in here. There's kelp in the uh, rooting cube. And now all we're gonna do is stick it in. Poke down a little bit. And there you go. There is your new clone. You would repeat this process over and over again. Here's another, another nice one I see here. I'll see if I can get it for the camera. I'm gonna shave down right there. I tell you what, first thing I'll do is cut this off, then I'm going to shave down, then I'm very quickly get it in the nutrient. Very quickly. Hold it here for about 10, 15 seconds. What's happening is it's trying to draw moisture or whatever it can. There's actually a vacuum going on right now where it's trying to, to heal itself. So it's going to suck up this rooting compound now and that's going to make all the difference in the world. Okay, so here's our cube. It's been about 15 seconds here. And there is clone number two. It's really that simple. Now, after you finish with all your clones, you'll keep this, you'll pour a little bit of your cloning solution in there like that. That's gonna give a little reservoir for these to suck up. It'll also uh, dissipate into the air and it will hold a lot more moisture. And what we wanna do to also hold moisture is to use a humidity dome. We cover the clones with the humidity dome. We actually, most of the humidity domes now are adjustable. So here's an adjustable one, if you can see. There's holes up here where you can open them for a little bit more ventilation. There we've got them open. I keep them closed tight for the first two days. Keep a little bit of water in the bottom as to where that nothing ever dries out. And I use this for two days completely closed. Then I'll come and open them a quarter turn. I'll open each one of these a quarter turn like that. I'll leave them there till day seven. And come day seven, I wanna start acclimating them. They'll be fully calloused by day seven. I open them up all the way and I start getting them acclimated. What's happening is the plant was breathing out of its leaves. It was actually taking up moisture out of the stomatas of its leaves. Now that it's got a callus and now that it's forming roots, we wanna push it to start using that root structure. So even after I say day 10, maybe day 12, the good litmus test by cloning is you'll take the top off, maybe for 10, five, 10 minutes, and you'll watch for these to wilt. If the clones begin to wilt, you know that you've got to put the moisture dome back on as they're not using their roots to breathe yet. When you can open these and they don't wilt whatsoever, well, you know that they're breathing out of their roots now or they're, they're functioning off of their roots. So therefore you would just be able to remove this. Usually at about day seven, day 10, you'll start moving, moving the uh, top a little bit like this. So it's a little bit off so air can get in. That's a real great way to harden off the plants. And then I say hardening off because that's the last stage. Once you've got good root structure, you wanna leave them out like this. You leave them under your fluorescent light for a little bit and you let them acclimate. You don't wanna put them right under a real high intense light or right out into the sun yet. You wanna let them acclimate. So you do that under a windowsill with some dappled light or you do it with a simple fluorescent fixture. Once they're able to stand up on their own without wilting, you know you've got a good clone. You take that out and you'll see plenty of roots. This whole thing will be covered in roots. And then you plant this in a one gallon and you've got yourself a one gallon plant. It's a real great way, a simple way to propagate plants. Many, many plants can be propagated this way.
there are just a couple simple tips that you need to use specifically silica mycorrhizae and getting some type of phytohormones on there we use our super kelp because it's just loaded with all sorts of good stuff we love this combination it works amazing we get roots in less than two weeks and we get a great success rate I've been cloning now in the grow lab for over the past year I've gotten probably 95 to 100 percent success rate that's pretty neat and it's not something that's easily done unless you know the tricks so this is Scott from Supreme Growers in the Grow Lab saying garden safe and garden smart.